welcome back to Geometry. We're talking about chapter 2.6 in the McDougal Littell Geometry book. Um, proving statements about angles. So this one's kind of easy because it's, re remember I told you that we were going to learn reflexive, symmetric, transitive, and then apply them to a bunch of situations. And we've already applied them to lines and now we're going to apply them to angles. So not too hard. So let's review. Reflexive property is A equals A. Symmetric is AB equals BA. And transitive, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. These are our three we've learned so far with a hand sign, but we're going to learn another one today. Yay! All right, so let's apply it to angles. Angle A is congruent to angle A. Angle if is reflexive. Symmetric, if, uh, if you have angle A is congruent to angle B, then angle B is also congruent to angle A. Okay, and then transitive, if angle A is congruent to angle B and angle B is congruent to angle C, then angle A is congruent to angle C. All right, so we're going to show you how we can use um, these, how to do a proof with angles, and there are angles inside of triangles, and um, the proof that we're supposed to do is we, they want us to prove that the measure of angle 1 is 40 degrees, and we're given that the measure of angle 3 is 40 degrees, that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, that's why there are these red lines, and that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. Those red lines are showing those are congruent. And we're supposed to prove that the measure of angle 1 is 40 degrees. Now, a couple of little points. In your book, they spend a lot of time proving postulates and theorems and things like that. I don't really am going to bother going over those. The what, what I want you to be able to do is a proof like this, where you're given something and you have to prove it. Math professors and presidents are the ones who prove those other ideas in math. Now, why do I say presidents? Because James A. Garfield, our president, a long, long time ago, uh, is the one who proved the Pythagorean theorem. And they had been using it ever since ancient Greece with Pythagoras, but then he proved it. He's the one who, who figured out the proof. So there are certain things in math we know, but we can't prove yet. And math professors and presidents, it appears, are uh, prove things in math. He was brilliant. He could write Latin and Greek at the same time um, with two different hands while thinking it in English. Crazy smart. All right. So, so there was a little free history and no additional cost. Okay. So here are our statements. You always just list your given first and what you're trying to prove you list here. So those were our givens. Now, the first thing we can say is that angle one equals angle three because of the transitive property. We know that one equals two and two equals three. So one equals three, the transitive property of equality. And we, by tradition, unless it's a measurement, we write congruent, we say congruent, we say it's equal if it's a measure, okay? Then next we can say that the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle three by the definition of congruence, because we wanted to change from congruent to equals because what we're proving is in equals. Gives us another line. And then we can say that the measure of angle one is equal to 40 degrees because we had the measure of angle 3 is 40 degrees, we have shown these are equal, so by substitution. Substitute, we have proved that a uh, measure of angle 1 is 40. All right? So let's look at another one. Then I want another, oh, I want to go down here. Um, so here are some new postulates, properties I want to show you. The first one is that... Uh, there's one that says all right angles are congruent. So if anything is ever marked as a right angle, that little square in the corner, then you could say that it is congruent to any other right angle because they're all 90 degrees. So it's the right angle. Um, it is the property. Uh, we did. Pro uh, it is the right angle congruence theorem. I can want to call it a postulate, but it's a theorem. The right angles congruence theorem. Okay, the next one, and these are in green boxes in your book, and they're also in the back of your book. There's a list of all the postulates and theorems, but you're only allowed to use ones that we've gotten to in proofs. Okay, okay the next theorems are on page 111, 
and it's the congruent supplements theorem. The congruent supplements theorem. And congruent supplements, it says if angle 1 plus angle 2 is 180, and angle 2 plus angle 3 is 180, then 1 is congruent to 3. This is really a lot like the transitive property. If both of these equal 180, then, uh, then 1 equals 3, because both of them are what was added to 2 to get 180. And remember, supplement means it adds up to 180. Complement means it adds up to 90. So the congruent complements theorem is the same thing. That if angle, measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is 90, and 2 plus 3 is 90, then 1 is congruent to 3. There's also one called the linear pair postulate. And it's if angle 1 and angle 2 add up to 180, then they are supplementary. But and that's just really the definition of supplementary, is things that add up to 180. All right, so those are all on your book. You can study those green boxes and take a look at it. Now it is time for something very important that I got so excited about, I was about to jump ahead to. And it is our next important thing that has a hand signal. And this is the signal. More fun with sound effects. It is called the Vertical Angles Theorem. So what I want you to do is I want you to get out your, your uh, colored pencils out of your geometry supplies and cross them. And then I want you to do like I'm doing and do this. Now, when you do this, you can see that if I make this one bigger, this one gets bigger. If I make this one bigger, that one gets bigger. So the ones across from each other are always the same. So, vertical angles. Now, I don't know why it's called vertical angles. It makes sense with 4 and 2 that they're equal. But 1 and 3 are also equal, and they're horizontal. So, don't let that confuse you. One, angle, angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 because they're across from each other, and angle 2 is congruent to angle 4 because they're across from each other. We will use this the rest of the year. We will use these the rest of the year. These are so important, that's why they've got hand signals. Reflective, symmetric, transitive, vertical angles. We will use this to prove all kinds of things for the rest of the, uh, this class. All right? So that's it. Study the examples in the book and do your homework. And that's it for chapter two. And I'll see you for chapter three. Math is fun.